Thank you, and good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you, Sudhir. Thank you, TCM. Thank you, IDG family, for uh, inviting me to talk to you today evening. Uh, Sudhir is very, very persistent. Uh, I was not supposed to be here, but he's kept on pounding me to <laughs> be here. And then when Sudhir uh, says be here, you try your level best, and luckily, uh, I was able to rearrange my schedule a little bit and uh, be here today, but I'm extremely glad to be here. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually a very tough uh, uh, task to uh, follow the whole day. You have, you've been having discussions about startups and India and economy and uh, everything, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, how do I now um, say anything that would be interesting or new? Uh, it's, 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 it's really a challenge, but let me see. If uh, it turned out to be good, I'll take the credit. If it turned out to be bad, Sudhir, <laughs> because he insisted that I come here. No, it, if it's bad also, it's my problem, right? Um, but it's, you know, what I want to do is um, uh, share some thoughts with you clearly um, uh, from a perspective which I hope is slightly different from what you see, um, which is what uh, I'll do. Um, before I start, uh, you know, let me congratulate uh, all of you. Um, you know, the extended IDG family with all the startups, the founders, the investors, the LPs, everybody, uh, because um, uh, things are going well, uh, and uh, I think we need to sustain this, right? So, um, and a good day of meeting, so congratulations. The perspective that I want to share with you very briefly today is um, the opportunities that are in front of us, and the big picture, really. Uh, it's not the, uh, you know, individual uh, pieces, individual technologies, individual startups that I want to talk about, but uh, some of the trends that I see that is, to me at least, exciting, very exciting. And I wish, um, you know, I was 25 again. Uh, that's, you know, when I started Infosys, 20, 24 precisely when we started Infosys. And uh, I was part of that ride uh, of uh, building an industry. Uh, many people here, you know, Saurabh is sitting right up front. I was expecting Ashok Sutha to be sitting here. Um, the many people who have been part of that journey of uh, building that uh, uh, industry in India. Um, but, you know, imagine having completely transformed uh, society, um, Suresh Sanapati is here. So, you know, a lot of these people have been actually part of uh, uh, this journey. Uh, Sridhar Mehta, you know, I may forget some other people actually, but uh, all of us are here. Um, and and when, when it all started, we actually didn't realize how um, dramatic this change will be. And only hindsight will, you know, give you that, that perspective, right? Um, in 1980, um, the global GDP was around um, 20 billion dollars. I put here the euro area was about uh, 3 billion dollars. US was also less than 3 billion dollars. Three trillion dollars, sorry. Japan was about um, two trillion. UK, India was 180 billion dollars. And Eurozone has gone to um, about uh, 14, 13 trillion dollars, but US has gone to 19 trillion dollars. From uh, approximately three trillion dollars to 19 trillion dollars. That's a multiple 
of five, six times in a period of uh, about uh, 35, 40 years, actually. India's also done well, um, 180 to about 2.6 trillion dollars. China has done exceeding. The two countries which actually stand out are US and China. And the global GDP has gone from uh, about uh, 20 to 80 trillion dollars, so four times actually. Uh, lots and lots of wealth in our lifetime. You know, that's to me, you know, very, very interesting because the next 30 years, there will be an order of magnitude more wealth to be created. And it's much broader now because countries like India and China are participating in that wealth creation. If India continues to grow at around 7-8%, the GDP will double in about 9-10 years. That means in 30 years it probably will double two, three times. That's a huge amount of wealth if you're 25 years old today to look forward to and be part of. Um, and, 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 you know, some of us had the opportunity, of course, we didn't think about the wealth that is being created. Uh, we were only there for the excitement of working with technology and uh, trying to create some global companies out of India. Um, but uh, I think uh, we, were, we were successful. And, and that's what gives me the confidence that this next 30 years are going to be even better and a lot of wealth will be created. And that's why I said, you know, maybe I should be 25 again if I can. Uh, I just saw this news item today. The personal wealth itself uh, is growing at 13 percent and it'll grow um, in the next five, six years, um, 2022 um, to five trillion dollars in India alone. This is personal wealth, five trillion dollars. That's a lot of, again, money. It's right now around two trillion estimated to be, and it'll double in the next five, six years. So. If you are a VC fund, hopefully some of that money will come to that fund, right? We need it, and I'll come back to this, actually. We need this uh, money coming into this. Now, you know, uh, again, I'll give you my perspective. If I look back at uh, computing, digital computing, it's primarily one technology that actually drove this wealth creation. This one technology that drove this wealth creation, primarily one technology, which is the digital computer. Of course, the internet around the mid-90s, mobile phone, but it's an extension and it happened linearly. It didn't happen simultaneously. Uh, don't worry about the details there, just to tell you that now, we are faced with actually multitude of explosive growth technologies, multitude of them. You know, gene editing is going to change healthcare and personal, personalized medicine. Cloud computing has completely transformed how we think about storage and, you know, servers and things like that. Mobile phones, of course, have changed the way we live completely. You know, everything now is through the mobile phone. IoT devices are going to change our personal environment, healthcare, everything again. An automotive industry will transform itself. Uh, we have now all of these things going to track in parallel, which is going to give you lots and lots of opportunities to actually reinvent, reimagine, and create new businesses. Whenever such massive changes happen, it opens up opportunities for new companies to come. 
because it's typically these smaller companies that take the risk, and they can take the risk because of the venture funding, the risk funding that's available. If you're within an established company, especially if you're a public company, your ability to take risk comes down dramatically because you are judged every single quarter on your performance. If you lose, if you make a loss in a quarter, the CEO's job probably is gone. So which CEO will actually take that risk? So it's really the smaller companies that are going to drive these changes, these innovations, bring them to the market, and using venture funding and things like that. And that I see as a great opportunity. And this multitude of technologies that are now happening in parallel, I think is, again, why I believe that, you know, we are going to see, a, again, a significant multiple of what we saw in the last 30, 40 years. Because of so much opportunity is there. So much opportunity is there to transform every industry. And we're seeing this now. <clears throat> I'm going to now switch to, um, again, some perspectives on India. Um, and and uh, why I'm excited. And I picked some companies. Some of them are actually IDG portfolio companies. Some are not. Um, um, but the theme that I want to share with you is um, uh, somebody should, uh, you know, tell me five minutes more. You know, I can then close it very quickly. Timekeeping. Um, you know, the reason I put up this is India can provide something unique to the world. Uh, you know, let me just take one example because I don't have too much time. You heard probably sick people. I don't know where you heard about Naramai today. Um, but it's best cancer screening using thermal imaging. Right? Now, if you are only in India, I believe, this idea will come to you because of the constraints, because of the challenges that India face, Indian women face. Only 10% of women get screened, 90% of women do not get screened. Uh, if you're in a remote area, you don't get an opportunity to get screened, etc., etc., etc. And they've come up with a technology that's as good or better, and it'll become better with more and more data. And it's one-tenth the cost, it's going to completely disrupt the technology. You know, you, you can have an fMRI machine which is now one-tenth the cost because using AI and uh, machine learning, you can enhance the output. So rather than going for a seven Tesla or a nine Tesla, you know, these are the most expensive machines that you can buy, fMRI machine, you can go to actually one Tesla or 0.1 Tesla and things like that and enhance that image using AI and machine learning, which is exactly what they're doing. They're taking thermal images using AI and machine learning and the data that they have, the database that they have, they're able to detect breast cancer and things to that. Bug works, you know, looking at antimicrobial resistance, Planis is underwater robotics out of IIT Madras. Again, by necessity, this is happening here in India. And this is something unique about India, I believe. I couldn't resist uh, putting up these two. Um, I was surprised to, you know, really in the last week I came to know about Choo Choo TV. You know, we have all heard about Sesame Street. Five billion views on YouTube. This company out of Chennai has got 19 billion views out of, on YouTube. 19 billion views out of YouTube. Okay, small company out of Chennai. I don't know, you know, I just heard about them this week, that's it. I don't know much about them, but I thought, you know, I should talk about that actually. Again, possible from India. And this is viewed by people all around the world, uh, 19 billion views. Some of their channels have 20 million subscribers, 20 million subscribers and global subscribers. Not Indian, actually. India people do not know about this company. I couldn't, again, help but put this. Hot news. Um, Araku just won the golden um, prize, gold prize, a golden trophy in the Paris uh, uh, coffee show. 
uh, it's an Indian coffee grown by Adivasis in Araku Valley. I believe it's the first Indian coffee to win a global award for the best coffee. Nothing is impossible, I believe. All this proves, actually. Um, it's, it's, it's what excites me now and what I believe you know, we need to look forward to in the future. The heading in, um, when I was, uh, you know, traveling, Straight Times had this heading, Singapore ranked second best Asian city for tech firms, the report said. Right at the bottom it says, Bangalore in India led the way with Singapore and Sension next. Bangalore is actually number one. The best environment for tech today is in Bangalore. Because nowhere else you will get mature companies, R&D companies, you know, some of the R&D companies and R&D um, uh, labs are here, startups, you know, um, defense establishments is through. This is a unique, unique environment, academic institutions, very unique environment. And we are not actually taking full advantage of the environment that exists here in Bangalore. Uh, number one location to set up an R&D facility in the world today is actually India, and in Bangalore particularly. Just a couple of more thoughts very briefly. Um, again, US Story published uh, an article recently about the top deals in Q1 2018. What struck me was so many of our companies are getting huge funding. And of course, uh, you know, Flipkart uh, blew everybody off the chart with 16 billion um, funding that they got from Walmart. Um, Oyo Rooms, a billion. Paytm, 300 million, etc. So our, our companies have really progressed to getting significant funding in the first five years. Infosys IPO raised uh, 10 crores. Infosys IPO in NASDAQ um, raised about 40 crores or something, 40 million or something like that. At that time, the valuation was $120 million. Yeah. We've got several of these companies now. Um, they're not at profitable, some of them at least, and um, you know, they're raising significant amount of funding. Now, the only comment I would make here is um, we need Indian money to flow into these companies. Most of these are funded by outside money. So we would like to see more Indian money. And that's, a lot of wealth is being generated. Some of the wealth should come here. Anyway. And the last uh, slide, startups are going global. And you'll see some names from... Um, uh, IDG uh, here. Uh, that again to me is um, very important. I, I strongly believe that if you set up a company today, you must think global. You must think global because it changes your perspective, it changes your competition, it changes your perception of quality. I can tell you that Araku worked very hard at the quality to get to that level. We use the best branding company. We use the best roasting company. We use the best accessories that we can get. We use the best designers that we can get. We didn't spare any effort and money. Money little, not too much. But we didn't spare any effort. It was the thought that was necessary to get to the best in the world. We must think about that, actually. It is extremely important for us to, of course, dream big but grounded with the reality of being the best. I believe we can do it. And I don't see any reason we cannot do it. Money is not a problem. Brains, not a problem. Ecosystem, not a problem. The environment is not a problem. People, smart people, not a problem. Large market, it's not a problem. We have a large domestic market now. 
competition is also there. So we should try and create world-class companies from India, and we can do that, and we can create a lot of money doing that. Thank you very much.